Okay guys, the second season of Danmachi is airing right now. And I think I've watched enough episodes to give my early impressions on this new installment in the franchise. First of all, I really liked the first season. I thought it was a well-executed fantasy action anime with a lot of interesting and fun characters. There was also the spin-off show called Sword Ocaria, which in some aspects I enjoyed even more. I'm a sucker for action anime with a female lead and getting to learn more about Miss Ice was as intriguing as I thought it would. She's a likable girl. Despite her blank stare and apparent disinterest in other recreational activities, there are a bunch of emotions and dilemmas she has to face in her journey. Ice is also the crush of both Lefia and Belle Carnell. Ooh, so you've fallen for her. Uh, maybe. Ice Wallenstein. Lefia, you seem to really admire Ice, don't you? Yes, she's perfect. Mm, looks like you've got yourself a fan, girl. She kind of is the main element that connects the shows together. Anyway, I was glad that we get the continuation to the story of Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? I mean, there is so much more left to be explored, and the protagonist can go pretty much anywhere. That little goddess. She had such a beautiful belty rack! <sighs> As I said before, this title has a lot of potential due to its rich lore and colorful cast of characters. Damachi presents a world where deities have descended from the heavens to experience a mundane life alongside adventurers and other mortals alike. And there she was. A goddess. <laughs> now that they live among humans, the gods only possess a fraction of their divine powers and they mostly use it to give their blessings to various adventurers. They gather in special groups called familias. The more members you have, the more influence you possess as a god. I like how some deities give specific perks to their followers or the adventurers in question need to have certain talents to join. Well, that wasn't the case for Hestia. She's the goddess that offered a blessing to the main character. You're not gonna get any sleep tonight! Hestia needed him as much as Belle wanted to be part of a familia. They are both poor and somewhat unsuccessful at their professions. Despite all that, the protagonist is rather popular with the ladies, which makes the lowly goddess extremely jealous. I swear, every day you're out with another girl, and now there's her too! Along his journey, he gathered a few friends of his own, like this furry lolly that gathers his drop items. It's just so cool! And this random red-haired dude, which is a blacksmith. Starting the first episode of the second season, I was surprised to see that this samurai chick has also joined the entourage. She's an okay character, I guess. But none of these party members are as awesome or interesting as most adventurers in the Loki familia. Tiona and Tione are my favorite pair from the bunch. They are twin sisters and yet very different with their personalities and breast sizes. Would you leave your boots out of this? Quit jiggling those stupid things around! Hey, it's not my fault you're flatter than deflated pancakes. Such fun and colorful characters to have around. Let's go back to Hestia familia which at this point consists of only one member, namely the protagonist. For some reason many consider him special and other deities, like Freya, want to steal him away. Must be his weird, not fully explained special ability. Realis phrase. Fast growth. Or maybe that chick is a pedophile. But we'll play again soon. Won't we? Works for me both ways. It's still unclear for me. Why they went with Freya and not Aphrodite when it comes to the goddess of love? The goddess of beauty! Freya! But I guess the show tries to combine different mythologies together, mostly Norse and Greek deities. A lot of furries populate this world as well. Not sure I like these fluffy dog ears. I do have a fetish for cat girls though, and thankfully we get one of them among the maids. At first I was just one that talked funny. I just told him to take this purse to Sirnia because she scurried after Monsterphilia so fast that she totally forgot it. Yeah, what's not to understand? Besides the second season, the numbers increased. Talking about new characters, we have yet another god to make his entrance. I'm talking about the Greek sun deity Apollo. Now for me, this interpretation of Apollo was a disappointment. He's portrayed as a weird, possessive guy that deals in shady business and intrigue. He's overconfident in himself and his familia. Ever since his introduction, he has done nothing but cause trouble for Hestia and her followers. It is implied that Apollo and Hestia might have had a past together. Isn't that right, Hestia? 
and yet it is never brought to attention again by the end of the story arc. Now as much as I like the show, I have to confess the following. This little entanglement with the sun deity wasn't the best way to develop either character or further the story. Feels like a cheap and lazy attempt for some filler if you ask me. There are good elements too, I won't deny that, but at its core the show slowed down these first episodes. Apollo is a greedy little prick that wants to steal Belle from Hestia. To either harm her or just boost his own ego. Easy to follow I guess, but Emmett tries to make it a bit more complex by having his top adventurer start some sort of rivality with the main character. What a disgusting, pitiful face. I'll never understand what Master Apollo sees in a vile insect like you. They give him power and motivation for his actions, and yet I had no satisfaction at his defeat. He was jealous of Belle's talent and unearned favor while he had to work hard to be accepted by his deity. It was an intriguing conflict that pushed Belle to better himself and reach his limits yet again. I was expecting a more personal showdown between these characters. In my opinion, they rushed the familiar war. Not enough screen time dedicated to all the people the anime insisted to make relevant just a few episodes ago. It gave me the impression this whole event was just an add-on inconvenience that had to be dealt with before the real story could form. They also tried to further develop the Fori Loli again by making her go through a strikingly similar experience she had had in the first season. You see, Lily had to yet again come to terms with her past and try to escape from her toxic, abusive entourage. Repeat the same story, Fred? Really? Well, we get to see the guy behind the famous wine, I guess. But this whole thing felt really tired. The protagonist does improve his abilities and strengthens his resolve. But this whole Apollo event ends rather fast and could have been skipped, if you ask me. There are some meaningful consequences I have to mention, though. Apparently, Belle was the only official member of the Hesti family, and this battle made his companions abandon their formal allegiance and join Hestia as well. Please, sir, may I join the Hestia familia to help Master Bell? Huh? They also get a pretty time mention, which is also much appreciated. Bell and his goddess used to live in an abandoned church, which eventually got destroyed in the relentless attacks of the Apollo familia. Guess it was about time for the main character to enjoy a bit of a luxury. I'm certainly looking forward for the inevitable moment when the girls will take a bath and the protagonist will so happen to unwillingly spy on them. It happened before. Spying on chicks is how a man expresses his feelings. Duh. Well, spying on chicks is how a man expresses his feelings. Let's pray it's gonna come to pass again. Now that we are talking about beautiful women, I also gotta mention that Belle actually managed to score a few points with Ice early on. You see, before the familiar war, Apollo just so happened to invite Hestia to a party. Naturally, the protagonist tagged along and got to see his crush yet again. He was brave enough to ask her for a dance, to the despair and jealousy of both Hestia and Loki. Believe it or not, these weren't the only goddesses unhappy with their pairing. Say, Otar, do you think it might be possible to lead a herd of minotaurs in here? Freya actually got a bit more direct in her pursuit of the main character by flirting with him right in front of everyone. I wonder if I'll get to see something spectacular this evening. I don't think so. If I'm not mistaken, this is like the first time they met in person, and she's rather forward in her approach. Ever since her introduction, Freya has shown suspicious interest for Belle. For no clear reason, either that he kinda makes her horny? Incredible. I like this girl. And it's kinda sad she's rather episodic. The goddess of beauty shouldn't be wasted as a villain. Let her join the harem. Or have her kidnap the main character. Or just, I don't know, get them together somehow. Okay, enough fanfiction. As I said before, Apollo seems like a distraction from the more intriguing and awesome characters the show has to offer. It was visually pleasing to see him lose miserably to Hestia, but except for a few weird faces, I won't remember him much. You 